right here. Watch, we're going to come up on that car right here. Hopefully there's a plate still on it. Dementia, on the other hand, is a slow, gradual impairment in a person's memory. At 76 years old, Ralph Brown gets confused from time to time. Dementia, the doctors say. But the former teacher, principal, and one-time mayor of Cornelius has never disappeared. Sunday, his wife of more than 50 years knew something was off. No signal since then, and there hasn't been any activity on Brown's credit cards. The family is asking people to keep a lookout for his car, a blue 2014 Nissan Sentra, license plate 319KQV. They're also asking those with rural properties to go tour them. They hope someone spots the father, husband, and public servant soon and brings him home safe. Every case is a little bit different. Today we are working on Ralph Brown, 76 years old, went missing on May 16th out of Cornelius. Now Cornelius is about 45 minutes away from where we're currently at. And there's a lot to this story because we have some sightings as far as two hours away. We have dementia. We have family members that are, I'm, I'm going to say they're like my daughters. They have been on the news. They've been great to speak with and talk with. They've given us a lot of information, but they have said, Jared, we really appreciate you coming in. But please, if we don't have to be on camera, please don't make us go on camera. So every family is different and we want to honor that for them as well. So what we do know from the family is that Ralph went missing on May 16th. We also have the great thing about this one is we have cell phone pings and tracking data on this one. So I, we'll go over that in just a few minutes, which is what takes us away from Cornelius down here in Newburgh where we're at, at Rogers Landing. So we'll get into more detail on that one. We also have some additional sightings that were over in Malala as well as Silver Falls. Now you're not from Oregon, so to give you a little perspective on that one, Malala is probably another 45 minutes, Doug, from mm -hmm, here, mm -hmm. and Silver Falls about an hour and 15 minutes from here, which really takes us outside of when we're searching for a lost loved one, really we've, we hone in on the home itself first in a five mile radius. But the thing with this one is, is that Ralph has dementia. And the stories that we have is, as he left, he told his wife he was leaving, he's like, I'm going home. Now, this can be interpreted several different ways. It's a, I'm going home, like, hey, it's been a great visit, or I'm going home yeah. to the maker, I'm 76 years old, I'm checking out. Now, with this one, I don't think, it's, I don't think we're dealing with a, a suicide, hey, I'm checking out. I think that we're dealing with a, and the reason for that in speaking with the family, with dementia, a lot of times Ralph would make those comments and those statements of him thinking that while he's at home with his wife, in his mind, he's at home with his mom. Mom, it's been a great visit. It's been great visiting with you. I now need to go home to my wife. Oh, wow. And then that home takes him over to Astoria, which is a hundred, or 136 minutes in the opposite direction from his house from where we're at down to the south right now. So I mean we have a pretty big span. Pretty much we have all of Oregon to, to be looking in right now. But I think what I want to do, let's jump over to the computer and kind of bring you into home, the home location, and why we're here in Newburgh. Yeah. Alright, so we have Ralph Brown, 5'10, 210 pounds. And the thing that I you know really draws me to Ralph is that this is everybody's dad, this is everybody's grandpa. So what I want to focus in on first, because I think that this is our most credible information we have. So because although, look, so here we are in Newburgh, but we also had spottings over in Malala and we also had it down in Silver Falls. But the thing about it is we end up with a whole lot of false information that comes out. Like, well, I think that I saw, you know, or, oh, I definitely saw, which is just simply not the case because so many people want to be helpers and they want to have that you know, that piece of information, but a lot of times is, is all speculation with no hard evidence and facts. And really taking us over here to Malala and down to Silver Falls is just, I mean, now we're crossing, you know, the interstate and we're really moving at another hour and a half to two hours away. At the beginning of May 16th, he went out for a drive with his wife. Like they went, they enjoyed going on long drives and they filled up that morning and they used up most of the gas. 
Ralph has not used his credit cards, mm -hmm. had very few dollars in cash with him, and did not have much gas left in the car. So I can understand getting, you know, 45 minutes to the south here. I'm not putting him over in Malala right now, and I'm, not, I'm definitely not putting him down in Silver Falls. In speaking with the family also, they also don't feel as though he's down in Silver Falls. And it comes back to all this cell phone data that we have. And so if we take a look at the cell phone data and the pings that we have, uh, Doug over here, we have, we have the two cell phone towers and they're really triangulating in this direction and we really wanna focus in on this square. And the reason for it is because this is information that the, it, I just got this last night from the family that just came in from the detective for some cell phone ping and information that this has not been released yet to the public. By the time this video comes out, it will be. So we can share it on video right now. So we're, we're talking in military time. So you know, uh, just that by 12 hours. So we're looking at 6.35. 6.35, you know, he's on Gaston Highway 47. At, you know, 6.10, he's near McMinnville. And by McMinnville, let me just show you on a map here. McMinnville is to the left over here. So we have his home up here in Cornelius, which is a little south of Forest Grove and directly west of Portland. The down here in Newburgh is where we're currently at. And I'll tell you why we're so focused on it. And then we have McMinnville is down over here. Okay. So that kind of gives you an idea. So 47 is where the cell phone ping started coming in at bringing him down to McMinnville. From there, we end up, uh, he's stationary for a little bit. Then at 635 North Northeast out of McMinnville toward Lafayette on highway 99. So now he's taking the road up towards, uh, you know, up towards Newburgh. Now remember at nine o'clock is when he gets a phone call from, or just shortly after nine o'clock is when his daughter gets a hold of him on the phone. But right before that, he's back into McMinnville on Highway 18 uh, for two miles. 932, north of McMinnville on 99, just north of downtown area, looks like he's lost. 940. And now remember, this is now 35 minutes after Lori had spoken with him, after they had that conversation of, you know, I'm in, you know, I'm in the bushes. Uh, downtown McMinnville, southwest on McMinnville, Highway 18 turns around, goes two or three miles southwest on 99, where the 18 splits. So that's going to be right down here on 99 and 18, where it splits. 10:25, he's in the box area on the map, moving south away from 99. And what I want to and what I want to show you on that one, so the box area that we're referring to, so this last cell phone ping area, here's Highway 99, he's south of that, moving, he's in the box area, which brings us right where? Right here. Right here to the river, which is why we have decided to get involved in this one, because now we are looking at a river. So here's where the box area was at, Highway 99. Let me bring that up here. So this is Highway 99. The box area is right here, south on 99, brings you. So there was some information that I came across that said that he stated on a phone call that he was lost in bushes and could see a golf course. So this goes back to the conversation I had with Lori, his daughter, about this. And the statement really is focused around the bushes. As far as how a golf course came into it, it was, she asked the question of, are you on a golf course or are you near XYZ golf course? Okay. And with that one, he did not have the answer as to where he was or not, but that's how the golf course came into this telephone game. But a golf course has never been a definite on any of those. Okay. Families have actually received doctored photos with duct tape over it. Like, hey, I have your father, I have your lost loved one, give me a ransom and I'll, you know, and I'll return them to you terrible people that are out there horrible um, so with that one you know they said you know do we need to put up a reward do we need to do anything like that I said no I said the good people are going to come out of the woodwork I said don't put together a reward like you know on this right now especially so soon because no amount of money is going to entice the good people with that one let's go get in the water at this first location and see if we can find Ralph today cool. Water clarity here is really good. I mean, you can see at least a good, you know, six, seven feet, which is really rare, you know, for what we do. So this is this is excellent diving conditions and the sun shining. 
But there's a great blue heron flying across the water right now. Got some people fishing. Just a beautiful, beautiful day. You know, this sun shining is really gonna light up, you know, when we're diving. So this is, conditions couldn't be any better. I forgot to mention the uh, car that we're looking for. It's a uh, Nissan Sentra, I want to believe. Uh, 2014, bluish gray. With the license cool. plate starts in uh, 319. I remember that part. So Nissan Sentra, four door. Okay. So this one, if you've never been with us before, this one is our live scope. This is actually like looking at a real TV, like looking at Sam in real time is what this one is. So if anything pops up here, we're going to see it in real time. Whereas this one is more of a picture in time. And so anything from the boat here, black, is this is our water column shooting off to the left, shooting off to the right. So we're at 30, 33 feet here, water column, 33 feet. And these are little ranges here, so 18, 36, 54, 75. Um, right here, you can see that like the boat ramp just pretty much dropped off immediately. It went from you know seven eight feet down to 25 to 30 feet right away. Nice smooth bottom, so if anything's down here, we're going to be able to see it no problem. So this is a picture in time, whereas this is a real time. We have a lot of debris, like tree debris down there. Tree debris, tree debris. So after he said that he was in the bushes, he told his daughter, I'm in the bushes, mm -hmm. uh, his vehicle continued to move after that point? After that. So okay. she said, hold on, I'm going to have, uh, I want to say Daryl, I'm not, don't the brother. Me or... yeah, the brother. I'm going to have a uh, brother call you. And then he called immediately and dad did, did not answer. Did not answer. He wondered, that made me wonder for him to say, hey, I'm in the bushes, it was me that he ran his car off the road and his car was in the bushes. Well, she said that he always used that term, though. Like, if he used had to go visit yeah. the donkey, I'm yeah. gonna go pet the donkey, or visit the donkey, or see a man about a horse. Yeah, see a man about a horse. Yeah. yeah. What other sayings are there for that one? Um, when we're out here, you know, part of our sharing these stories is for, you know, really we've seen a big movement taking place as to, hey, Jared, how can we get involved in our own areas? You know, one is, you know, if you have a boat, great. If you have sonar, you know, get out on the water when you hear about a missing person. You know, check the boat ramps. But the way that we like to search these boat ramps is, you know, which way is the current going? But what we've also learned is look for potential entry points up from those boat ramps as well. Start with something closer to shore and then start working your perimeter out. Now, because we're hitting 75 feet left, 75 feet right, plus some variance, you know, really we're searching about 100, 125 feet is kind of our search from the bank to begin with. Then what we'll do is we'll move over enough and overlap part of that so that way now we're about 75 to 100 feet off of the shore and we're overlapping what we've already done coming back up river from there and that way we're making sure that we don't miss anything in the process and then just kind of make your continue to make your way out now in a swifter moving uh, river and current like the Missouri River you know a vehicle can really go 500 to 700 yards or so but once a vehicle settles once a vehicle settles into the bottom of a river it's going to stay there for years to come through floods and everything and kind of think of it as a turtle that the um, you know, like a turtle gets down low on the bottom, and regardless of how much current is going over, or the rocks, like it's just not going to move. So same thing with the vehicle, that once the vehicle locks in, it's not going to move. We just got real shallow. Yeah, see we just got real shallow there. Um, but back here also, it appears to be, wow, it got really shallow real quick. Yeah, you can see the bottom. Okay, back here, look, you can see right here on the sonar, we went from, you know, 25 feet to shh, four feet. So that's what it looks like when it gets shallow. So we're gonna go back over this part. But there's a vehicle, I believe, that's out here, Sam. And it was off to my right. So if I scroll back here real quick. Right here looks like a faint vehicle. It looks like two vehicles that are down there, Sam. So let's go check those out. All right, so from this angle, it does not look like a vehicle. So I mean, you can clearly see this tree, 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 tree. But then you have this right here. And is it just a tree looking at it from the, a different angle? I think it's just this right here. So, where we're currently at right now, within the square box, is Roger's Landing here. 
what we have over here, kind of by these water treatment plants, is kind of a offshoot of a little road that puts you in some bushes that puts you next to the river as well for that section. So I'm gonna say, let, let's go check that space out as well. So with this one, this is where that road is next to the river from up above that I had on the uh, GPS map there, or on the coordinates. I know they had the drones out here. I don't know if we can identify if there's any tire marks coming in, but searching it for underwater from Sona will tell us for sure. Well, you just never know when they Sam. Yeah. This uh, actually really surprised me. Like, there's no crime. No crime, no cars, no dumping grounds. Yeah. Out of this boat ramp. Clean. Clean. So let's go uh, take a look at our map. Come up with a new game plan as to where our location number two is going to be at today. So here's, here's where we're at on this one. In fact, Doug, you can come around here on this. And I guess I'm gonna call this a little bit of my concern. If we take the square box, you know, as to 99, cell phone ping. So here's, here's our square box, okay? And here's where, where we're sitting at right now, at the park. Cell phone ping, cell phone ping. It put it right over here for that last ping. These are those ponds, that, like the uh, waste treatment ponds is what you have over here and we searched the road right above put in right here we searched all of this we searched the old boat ramp here we went down underneath the bridge and we searched right along the road right here where a vehicle could go off as well as there's a 90 degree turn right here that we searched now you have the water treatment which there's no way we're getting into water treatment they just mm -hmm. won't let us in there the other thing that I want to just bring to our attention right now, which we may have to put the boat back in the water, because mm -hmm. look at this over here that we completely missed. Two things, and this is in our square box area. But let's go walk it. Like, how do vehicles actually get down here that we've missed this road? But then also, look at this back here. Mm -hmm. There's a little hidden pond back here as well. Um, yeah, and so there is an element to the homeless portion of this as well, is that um, Ralph was a big advocate in helping the homeless. Mm -hmm. And so like that was his comfort zone yeah. as well. So that's something to look at. Like, yeah, are there any homeless camps by the skate park possibly mm -hmm. that he knew that was, you know, with water nearby as well? Yeah. And, you know, then that does that take us into a possible foul play scenario? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I mean, until he's found, we just don't know. Yeah. So we're gonna want to check that out. But what we have right now is there's just. She said this is all private property. This is actually gated off. And so with that one that checks us off. Let's go find out where that skate park is at, and follow up on that lead. So we just spoke with the uh, little uh, ranger person here. There's a gate at the front when we first come in, and they said that that gate is never locked. So it's never closed at night, it's never locked. We're at the skate park is where we're at. There are supposed to be two ponds back here and she says that people have been out here before checking the ponds. I don't know how deep they are. I don't know, um, you know, if there's any tire tracks and I think that's what we just want to check is how far back are they? And if we can actually just spot in the water. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure they've already been searched with some other drones that have been out here. But again, this, this one would, I think would come into like the foul play scenario because of where it's located and yeah. it's not easy to really get to. That, that would be my guess on that one. And again, we're coming to the cell phone pings. It just, it really keeps us, remember like Tammy up in Montana, like Sadie was our smoking gun on that one. I feel like the cell phone pings in this yeah. area is really between McMinnville, Lafayette, Newburgh. Yeah, he, we can't he, ignore he, those. He keeps tight. Yeah, like there's a pond, is that a pond right there? Oh, that thing's really shallow. Oh yeah, there's not even a pond there. It just looks like a pond on that one. A satellite oh, I found view. it. Okay, here it is. I found the other pond. So that's shallow there. 
Yeah, I mean, you can see how shallow that pond is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's no vehicle in that pond. And you can see the creek coming in. Fact, yeah. Like, yeah. Fact, you can see somebody walking right there. So nothing on that one. All right, that one marks this one off. Let's go back to where those cell phone pings were at. Kind of where they started about, you know, t like I said, two hours earlier. It's just yeah. all within this area. So take the cell phone pings, the triangulation, and focus on that entire facility. So we've canceled out the the Rogers Landing boat ramp, yeah. the access there, what was in the river, in the entire vicinity, all the way down to the bridge, um, the skate park here. So if she was actually a ranger, I didn't know that, um, gave us some information in regards to this skate park being an area uh, of interest. And we're here, we've looked at it, we've searched with drone, the two ponds, small ponds. and Well, one, one wasn't even a pond. It was just yeah. the, the way that it looks like on satellite. It just ended up in the shadows. the shadows. And then the other one is a pond with the creek that goes into it, and you can clearly see the bottom. So from 635 was 47 coming down into McMinnville. And so for two hours, so from six o'clock to 10 o'clock, so really for four hours, we never left this area. So the last time we were in McMinnville was at? 9.57. 9, 9 so 10 o'clock. So 10 o'clock was still in McMinnville. So he was over there for three plus hours in McMinnville area. And then six minutes later, he ended up over here in Lafayette and then Newburgh downtown. And then those were our last cell phone pings was over in that location. So again, it takes us to this area as to be in the last cell phone pings, which the skate park is, we're right over here right now. And this is where the pond is at in that little creek, which takes us a little bit away from it. I mean, so what is our smoking gun in this? Do we go back to McMinnville? Because that's where he was for three or four hours or we've now moved away from him there and we're over here and if it was foul play in McMinnville for three hours you know are we looking at foul play that they then ended up in Newburgh to dump a vehicle away from where they lived so then that takes us to the river so let's just look at the foul play scenario and on this not an accident scenario if it's a foul play scenario, they're not going to go to Rogers Landing because they are from the area, they know Rogers Landing, they know there's gonna be cameras there, and we've already cleared Rogers Landing. So now what other out of the way potential river accesses do we have? I guess is what we're gonna be looking at. Let's say that he continued south from here, you have the Wheatland Ferry Crossing, which you can actually drive right into the water there. The people, lots of people have driven into the water, so do we instead go, go down there and check that out? When the ferry's not there, it just goes right into the road. See that on both sides? And it looks like a regular highway that you're driving on. Um, the family did question if the Wheatland Ferry comes into play on this one. And so if we look at directions to that from here, our starting point is Newburgh. I mean, it's 21 miles away. I, f I feel like we're getting farther away. Mm -hmm. I mean, here's our McMinnville. Our Lafayette is over here, Newburgh here. But we can't rule it out because don't look at it from this side of the road. This is actually the wrong side because everything was taking place on this side of the river. I'll say let's go down there. Let's just cross this one off because I do know that there's a couple of vehicles in here to begin with. This is where last year a uh, gal drove in intentionally last year. Unless you guys have any other ideas on where we should uh, hit next. I mean, cause did he have a charger in his car? I mean, do we know if he had a charger in his car? Yeah, yeah I have no idea. Yeah, there's been no other cell phone, anything. Yeah. No other uh, credit cards, yeah, debit yeah. cards, I mean, nothing that. financial. So, I mean, we have to look at this as the foul play for dementia. Again, I think we just want to go the dementia route. He's just lost. He's just confused. He was not in distress. So he was not in distress at 9 o'clock. So that takes the foul play scenario out of it for McMinnville from 6 o'clock to 9 o'clock. So now we have that two hour window and the family did question Wheatland Ferry. Okay, so now we're down in Kaiser, Oregon with the Wheatland Ferry Crossing uh, where we already know of two to th possibly three cars already in the water. This makes very good access for that happening. So it makes sense that we search here. We're not too far from where we were earlier uh, up in uh, Newburgh area searching there. Uh, so now we're here. We're gonna see what comes of this area here. We'll we'll have to time our searches scanning um, across right now uh, because as you see behind me, the ferry is coming back and forth across. There's some underwater cabling as well. Uh, but yeah, we're here. We'll probably be here for the next hour. Hopefully, we figure out what's in this water here. It's gonna be pretty cool because we already know of two to possibly three more cars that are under the water. 
I think it'd be pretty cool. So the stater was here, and by stater I mean Oregon State Police was just down here. He really had no new information as to the three vehicles that, you know, we kind of know about in here. Like I said, none of us know where those three vehicles are at. So we need to identify those. Is there a fourth or fifth or sixth down here? We don't know. Also, have they actually dove on those other vehicles or not? And have those been cleared? This is all the unknown for all of us here. Yeah. So uh, he, he, he did acknowledge when we brought up the fact that there was two, possibly three vehicles in here. He was aware of the, the last case here that was involved. He also pointed out the boat ramp right there. He said it would be really good to check that out if we were even interested in the area, we'd have to check that out. Okay. Um, he showed us a really cool map where it showed that this side of the bank is all uh, county land and that's all state land. Really? Uh, it's, it's, called, it's the Mission Park or something over there. Our big mission with the ferry is it says keep clear 200 feet back. And so our game plan will just be as he's over at one side, we'll go scan the other side and vice versa. So we'll get everything cleared in here. This would be a perfect timing right now. The uh, ferry's making its way across. In fact, you can see the uh, bottom right here. We're only six feet deep right here. From what I know, just from previous reports, no vehicles were on this side before. And I think that's just, like I said, you can see everything. So we're now coming up on 16 feet, 20 feet. So this is where the vehicles have been spotted in here before, where they've just completely come straight down this ramp here. What, what are you seeing, about maybe 50, 60 feet away? Uh, 35 feet over there. 35? Yeah. Might have another one here too. I'm not sure on that one. We'll get a better reading when we go upstream at 2.5 miles an hour. All right, so if you look at this over here, so if, first of all, if you look at the water, see all this moss that's floating down? Now, if you take a look at this on the screen here, what you have is you have a vehicle that's been covered, like, I mean, covered by all of that moss and algae. Mm. So it doesn't really look like a vehicle, but I'm telling you, that's a vehicle right there. So. Let's just back up a little bit and put us right over it real quick. All right, so we got the ferry coming back across. We got to stay back 200 feet. I got something over here. It's kind of weird. I don't know what it is. I don't think it's a vehicle, but we'll, we'll go check it out. Okay, there it is. There it is. Woo! There it is. What is that? So see how that's only like uh, seven feet long? Yeah. So it's not, you know, 14, 16 feet long like the other one. But we could just need to be hitting at a different angle. So this is where it's right underneath this. And I'm trying to get like a full length on it. Like, can I get 12 to 16 feet out of it? So right now, Sam, it's supposed to be three cars in here. Oh, I've only identified one one car. We could have a car right here. Huh. Right here. Watch, we're going to come up on that car right here. Should be coming up on it like right now. There it is. Yeah, there see it, it is. Yeah, yeah, that's see the wheel. wheel. Yep, that's definitely a wheel. Yep. And there it is right here. And there it is there. So we can at least dive on the two. But then coming down here, do I have another one right there off to the left? So we need to go out just a little bit further and identify what that is as well. Oh no, we already identified this one. So that's number two. Well, we have one in question here. I can't exactly tell. Yeah, it seems like on the last one you're actually off of that bald patch. So it seems like you're up maybe about 15 feet, 20 yeah, yeah. feet. So we, have, so we have one in question right here. So we'll just have to get more magnets and, I, and latch these on. But the other one is up here next to this pole closer to the ramp. Yeah, right there. Yeah, you totally have a vehicle right there. Like I just, I just want to be like 100% certain. Yes, Sam. That's a car, we have to come back. Game plan. Game plan. Three vehicles with a potential fourth underneath the wow. ferry. When there's actually a potential fifth. Fifth. But that other one is like, it's really old, it's buried in the silt, like it's been there for like 20, 30 years. Wow. So we're, we're gonna rule that one out right now. We're gonna go check out these three by marking them, running the line for those three. Let's use the underwater ROV because the water's so clear yeah. and just identify what those vehicles are with the ROV. Cool. And then while the ferry is across the other way, we don't want to dive that because yes. Yes. safety reasons. But I think that we can get away with taking the ROV up and when he's on the other side, then we can check that out with the ROV. So that's the game plan, which means that we need to mark it and then move everything to the other side. Thanks. 
down. Yep, I can see your magnet dropping. Okay, right there, hold your magnet there. And then I'm gonna run you right into it. Let me leave it in the air, kinda. Well, yeah, you might be right on it. Let me turn you back around a little bit. I'm taking you over like three times, Doug. Yeah, I mean, I, I felt like I just lifted it, lifted over something that's just not metal. If that's not it, then I've got another target for you out here. Yeah, I feel it. It's, it's not magnetic. Okay, so that's not magnetic. Okay, well then let's take you right over here. Oh, 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 here we go. I got wheels right here. You should be on it. Are you on it? I feel something. Yeah, you should have, feel a, something. You should have a solid lock there. And now, it just dragged over it. It bit a little, but just more. No, I saw wheels on that one. Okay, all right, you saw wheels. The one thing we know, yeah, I'm listening. Magnet doesn't lie. And you see wheels and all. Oh, yeah, yeah, I see wheels okay. and all. Wheels and all. All right. Okay, see, look, look, I'm coming up to it. I can see the wheels upside down. Okay, like right. You should be snugging into it right now. Bounce, bounce, you should be right on it. Oh, we're on. Well, we were. I felt Kind of. Tangled up here. You gotta get me off of that. Uh... Oh, look at that. No wonder you're not catching. <laughs> <laughs> so, there's a reason why you're not we've catching. We've been combating this, so it, it kind of took over the drone, and now it's taking over the magnet. You want to kick some of that off, and I bet you we can. I can put you right on it again. So, where we're at with this right now, I've got it marked with the magnet. Sam suited up, got his gear on underneath water following our line down and we should know here within three minutes hopefully there's a plate still on it we're gonna run a plate uh i got the the car to the state trooper that was here earlier so if we need a plate man we call him immediately oh nice okay Cherokee. Anybody in it? No. Plate's already pulled? I got a good shot of the license plate so we could run it later. You didn't pull it? Huh? You didn't pull the plate? I didn't pull it. Let me go grab it. Yeah, go grab it. Yeah, you want to grab it? Yeah, I'll grab it. So normally it's best if we pull a plate off of it. That way, if any other divers have been on it, it kind of gives the indication that this vehicle has been cleared and ran. Yeah. So we, we saw that a lot in Portland. Yeah. What year Cherokee? Here? Yeah. Like, no like 90s, 2000s? Brand new, old? Deep Grand Cherokee, it's upside down. It's uh, February of uh, 2015. So 428 EBL 2015. Good job, Sam. We'll mark another one for you. Sounds good. It's gonna be down here just past these chairs. 
Okay, we're coming up right on it right now. Okay, drop your magnet. Okay, wait, hold it right there. Okay, you should be dropping right on it. You should be locking on. You should be locked on. I think it's a pickup truck. It almost looks like a pickup truck. Are you on it? I'll take you forward a little bit more. Yeah, I was on it. You were on? Yeah. You should still be on. Nope. Like, I have a solid picture of this thing. Yeah, it's definitely something very rusty. Yeah, I, th I think it's an old pickup truck. Shark! Whoa. It's an SUV, upside down, very well buried, deep. Uh, all the windows look like they were intact, except for the back door. It was busted wide open. License plate? No, I couldn't find any license plate. Right, so I'm guessing it's clear then. But it's been there a while. Yeah, like oh yeah. 20 years. Maybe 10, 15. All right. I mean, enough, enough so it's buried. Don't know how long things get buried in this river. But yeah, just like you know, you were seeing on the sonar, us guessing that they're covered with all the algae and weeds, that's exactly what's going on down there. Each you just got once you get down on like this big ball of weeds, yeah. you just start clearing away until you see the car. So we went over that area again. Huh? So it was only like six feet deep to the top of what it is that we're looking at, ten to the bottom. And with that, you can actually see the bottom. It was just a rock shelf, is what it is. Oh, okay. So that one clears the this entire Wheatland Ferry area. Sam, you put forth really good effort diving. Like, you look completely exhausted. <laughs> yeah. I feel like you overdressed today. I certainly did. I wore my heavy undergarments. And I think it's like 90 degrees outside. And the water's like maybe 70. And so I was definitely overdressed. As I was down there fighting the current, I, I felt hot. Too hot. So you did end up getting the plate. Doug has actually put a phone call into the Oregon State Police with the officer that was here this morning. We're waiting to hear back so that way we know what the story is on this Jeep Cherokee. So if we hear anything back on the license plate, we'll let you know in the next video, which means please do us a favor, subscribe to this channel because it is the way that we're actually able to come out here and help the families free of charge to them. Just being very transparent with you, it's the YouTube monetization, it's the Faithless Book monetization, it's you taking the time to share and comment, but also some of you have taken the time to actually become members. And with the memberships, you do get the videos early. That's our way of saying thank you. But regardless, we want to say thank you to everybody, whether you're just a subscriber or you're a member as well. On that one, our search continues tomorrow. We don't know where. I, I think that I think that the cell phone things are the smoking gun as well. Yep. Similar to the tan we got yep. with, with Sadie. Sadie. So I think that we need to go back into Newburg tomorrow and we just need to, what are we missing? Start, you know, start going out from there and then kind of make our way. I think we need to make our way back towards Corvallis where he was from. Yeah. I, I think yeah. that he back was home. making his way back home. Um, I don't know that for sure. We don't know. That's why we're out here. So, yep. on that, thank you for being here with you with us. We'll see you tomorrow. Later, later. Bye. -bye.